Ladies and gentlemen, two absolutely shocking things have just happened in the world of chess. Number one, Magnus Carlsen lost the game. Number two, Magnus Carlsen lost this game in literally the rarest way possible. And en passant, checkmate. And that's the purpose of this video. That's it. That's all I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you how the greatest chess player, probably of all time, loses to the rarest chess move of all time. Now, listen, uh, Magnus has been streaming a little bit more, uh, and we have been, you know, a little, little, little bit in touch. Maybe we're planning a little bit of a collab. Don't want to spoil anything too much. Uh, but uh, we'll see. And hopefully this video doesn't change his mind. Still, still, you know, people's champ. And the GOAT just, you know, an amazing thing happened. And for once, Magnus just didn't slaughter everybody in his way. I'm just saying. And no, I didn't pay Magnus to interact with me. But if he had a cameo, I might have. So Magnus was paired in a Blitz game against Jun Ludwig Hammer, also from Norway. And the game began with the move E4. Magnus responded with G6. This was just a random game. Magnus was uh, streaming uh, twitch.tv slash I don't know what that means. Um, I might put it in the description though. And uh, d4, e6. So already a very disrespectful opening, make no mistake. I mean, if you play g6 on the first move and you don't put the bishop here on the second move, I don't know what the heck you're doing. Now, admittedly, there is the North Sea defense, I believe this is called. Yes, there is an opening called the North Sea defense. Don't ask me the questions. I'm just here to relay the chess moves for you in an accessible and funny way so you laugh and don't realize that chess is basically all pain and sadness. I don't know about these opening names. But Magnus plays e6. One of the grandmasters, I believe from Russia, named uh, Vladimir Malachov? I think that's his name. He likes to play like this. He plays a system where you play basically like knight, bishop, and then pawn to d5. In fact, Jun Ludwig himself likes to play like this with the black pieces in bullet. So I've played Jun Ludwig a little bit in, uh, in bullet before. And actually, so I don't know if Magnus is like making a meta joke here, trying to play against, you know, his, I guess, national uh, colleague. Uh, and Jun Ludwig just immediately goes for h4. Why does he go for h4? Normally attacking the pawn on g6 is possible with the h pawn, uh, but now that the knight has already been committed to this square, it'll never go here, which means it really will never fight for this. Um, now Magnus here has an option of moving like this or just ignoring. Ignoring just isn't gonna cut it. This is way too dangerous. So Magnus plays h6 with the intention of meeting the move h5 with the move g5, at which point this sacrifice just doesn't give enough for white. Uh, white can do this, absolutely, get two pawns for the knight. White has nothing here. I mean, it's it, it's, it's pretty much nothing uh, at this level. But, you know, at some levels, this pawn might become a queen four moves later. Um, so bishop f4 is played. Now we have bishop to g7, queen to d2. Queen to d2 is a fantastic high-level move. Why queen d2 and not knight c3? Because you know that probably black would castle. I mean, black wants to get the king to safety. And since black has already committed this pawn to thwart off white's h-pawn initiative, this move is what's called a prophylactic move. You anticipate uh, castling and bishop takes h6 would be winning a pawn. So Magnus plays this kind of finishing of the system with the move d5. Okay, system is a very strong word for a meaningless three-minute game, but I digress. And now we have e5, and Magnus attacks, attacks the center with the move c5. So just very normal stuff here. He understands his king is going to likely be safer in the center of the board. He now offers up what is a free pawn. Uh, if you do look at this, this is absolutely a free pawn. But capturing that pawn destabilizes the white center. White now has some pawns under fire here. And believe it or not, it's actually very difficult to keep these pawns defended forever. For example, at the very least, black can give a check on the king and win this pawn back immediately. And if white tries to play a move like b4, thinking, okay, well, there's no check, uh, black will simply continue to bludgeon these pawns. So it, it's actually very difficult to keep these pawns kind of together, which is why you'd Ludwig plays c3. Magnus finishes his development, knight to a3, and here uh, Magnus plays an incredibly disrespectful move. I mean, just ridiculously disrespectful. Uh, he plays king f8. I'm not gonna lie to you, man. That's the GOAT over there, and I gotta respect his moves. But I, I can't really explain that move to you. Because <laughs> um, now this actually very much is a free pawn. 
And, Ma and, and, and Jun Ludwig is not only one move away from just strengthening his position, his knight is going to gallop into d6 where it will live absolutely permanently, like squatter's rights. Uh, it's bad stuff. Um, probably Magnus have to take on d4, but the position's not easy, so he plays king f8. Uh, Jun Ludwig does in fact take on c5, clean pawn up. He is like one or two moves away from basically getting a completely dominant and winning position. And when you are a move away or two moves away from getting a dominant and completely winning position against one of the best players of all time, that's when they turn on the Jets and they completely turn the game around. So he plays b6. So the point of b6, according to Stockfish, is just to lose faster. It, as you can see, it's not impressed. But Magnus is gambiting a pawn here to open up the position, bishop a6, maybe rook to b8, maybe just walk the king to h7. But, you know, again, the knight is going to go to d6. Uh, but Jun Ludwig doesn't play knight b5 for some reason. He doesn't play knight b5, knight d6. Uh, he probably didn't like this. He didn't like the fact that when the knight arrives, it will very quickly be booted. Uh, but actually, even the computer likes taking, but you don't have to take. I mean, you can play bishop e3, maybe try to get the bishop to c5. Um, but again, it's Blitz, so he spent eight seconds and just developed his bishop. Magnus now played bishop a6, and I gotta tell you, black is, like, not horribly worse here. Considering the opening, the king is in the center, the down the pawn, Magnus has Magnus bonus, okay? Uh, and here he plays the move, uh, Jun Ludwig, he can take on a6, but the amazing thing is that if, if white just castles, like, absent-mindedly castles, black will play bishop d3, queen d3, right? And now there's even this absurd g5. What? Like, and, 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 and all of a sudden, actually, it's white who's kind of uncomfortable. And if you take, I will take this. I do not care that my king ends up in the center. My king is completely safe. Somehow Magnus's king just found shelter in the absolute center of the board. It doesn't make any sense, but that's just how it works. Um... And yeah, I mean, g5 is ludicrous. And let me tell you, if, there, if there's a man alive to play the move g5 here, you know, Fate of the universe on the line. Martian's got the, you know, laser beam, death beam pointed at Earth. I want Iguodala. I want Magnus. He's going to find the move G5. It's, it's just, right? So, that doesn't happen. Jun Ludwig kind of understands that. Plays the move B4. B4, a uh, couple of ideas. Number one, queen no longer has to guard the pawn. Number two, you want to go B5 and fork these two pieces. Now here, something completely ridiculous happens. Magnus sees that the fork is coming. Uh, and he strikes immediately in the center with the move D4. So total chaos breaks out. Now... Could Magnus have taken? Yes, absolutely. Um, but he chooses not to. Had he taken, it's not so clear what his next best move is. Here the computer still advocates for g5, despite now both rooks being on the h-file, a little bit too convoluted and complicated for Blitz. Magnus plays d4, blowing up the center of the board. Jun Ludwig plays b5, looks like he's simply winning the game by force. Magnus plays pawn takes c3. White's queen is hanging. And if white were to recapture, white would get slapped in the face with the move knight to d5. Like I said, all it takes for the best players in the world to reverse the game is one move. So knight to d5 would have come here, would have hit the queen, it would have hit this bishop. And by the time the dust settles, all of this, black is just hitting with the queen. This is lost. That's going to get taken. It's horrible. So this move d4 shakes up the game. Here, here, Jun Ludwig offers a trade of queens. And now Magnus is just straight up better. Like, from lost to better, the chess gods watch over their... I mean, it's spectacular stuff. But he's better in a very obscure way. Uh, he needs to play knight before. And then he needs to take the queen, and then he needs to take the bishop. And amazing move here. If white takes the queen, there is an amazing move called a Zuichenzug, where instead of taking the queen, you take the bishop first. And then if the king walks up to attack you, you take another bishop with check. So before you take the queen back, you get two bishops. White doesn't have to play this horribly, and he won't because he's a very strong grandmaster, but that's a Zwitschenzug. Now, queen takes queen. Magnus plays pawn takes queen, and even though he is forked, there's this. So he's figured it all out. Of course, Magnus saves the day again, another Gotham video where he hypes up Magnus, yada, yada, yada. You know, pawn takes a6, knight takes f4, bishop goes to e4, and Magnus, cool as a cucumber, rook takes pawn. That's it. Dust has settled. Rook is going to take the knight. Magnus is a pawn up. His king is going to go here. The rook is coming. He's going to win the pawn. This pawn's going to become a queen. And he's up 25 seconds on time. 
I mean, it's basically time to call it a Magnus video, right? That's it. We're done. We're done here. Very quick. 10 minutes. Boom, boom, boom. Magnus did something crazy. You all like and subscribe. Seriously, if you haven't subscribed yet, go, just look down. Some of you just watch because it gets brow, you know, recommended to you all the time. And YouTube is smart. It knows what you like. Thank you for liking this channel. But you could just subscribe too. I'm just, I'm just saying. It does help, you know, the channel. Um, now, plug aside, we have the following position. But here, to Jun Ludwig's credit, despite being 30 seconds down and the entire game getting away from him, he plays long castles in a position that where it looks he has no business castling queenside. He plays oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. And now the rook is activated, right? And if the king tries to walk out, king gets slapped back into the cage. So, what does Magnus do? Well, remember a long time ago he played king f8 and I kind of gawked at that move. Well, now he plays king g8 and he's going to finish the journey. He's safe there. Then he will bring the rook. Life will be good. Jun Ludwig, uh, in this position... Now, by the way, instead of king g8... Uh, Magnus could have, of course, played knight d5, sealing the d-file, <laughs> but uh, then, of course, bishop here. So, the triple zeros from Jun Ludwig to castle long in an otherwise totally insane position was very, very clutch and very important, because Magnus here is faced with a situation. Does he block or does he finish the journey as he has intended through this game? He's now down, he's up 40 seconds. Biggest advantage of the game. Well, as it turns out, blocking with the bishop was the better move. That's not what Magnus played. Had Magnus blocked with the bishop, uh, the attack is sort of extinguished and king g7 is next. Like you can play king b1 here, black can play king g7, or even c2 check and try to win the pawn. And probably Magnus would have won this game, nobody would have ever thought twice about it, and I would not make a YouTube video about it. But instead, Magnus played the move king to h7. Suddenly, the evaluation bar shot up to M11. M11. Oh my god. Is that, I can't tell if that's a BMW model or if that's an evaluation of a chess game. There's a mate. Now, mate in 11 might sound crazy to you. What the heck does that mean? Checkmate in 11 moves. Who on earth would find a mate in 11? Well, mate in 11 is made a lot easier when every single move is natural and forced. And in this position, I think Magnus had kind of overlooked an idea. Uh, that was incredibly, it was disgusting. It was a disgusting idea. Um, and I think he even on stream said he got like a little bit arrogant and he thought that he couldn't get checkmated. Um, well, knight g5 check. Knight g5 is an incredible move. So black plays pawn takes, pawn takes. And I bet in his brief scan of the position, Magnus saw this and said, okay, well, Yoon has to now, you know, trade rooks or he's going to lose. But in this position, Jun Ludwig saw a little bit better and saw that he can sacrifice his rook! Rook takes h5! And the point is, black can block with the bishop, but then it's mate in a few moves. But Magnus, to his credit, can go out with a bang and make history. For the beauty of the game, he does not resign. For the beauty of the game, he does not make mate in five. For the beauty of the game, Magnus takes the rook and allows Jun Ludwig to complete his destiny by bringing the bishop back to e4. The black king has absolutely no legal moves, so he pushes his pawn forward, and this is why they created en passant. Because in this position, after moving his pawn two squares and standing side by side with these two pawns, Jun Ludwig had a choice. He could take this way, or he could take this way, and he played e takes f6 en passant checkmate. Get up and take a bow. Amazing. Just at, not me. I hope Jun Ludwig frames this game. I hope he sells it as an NFT. I don't, what, whatever the kids do nowadays, all right? I don't know what the kids are doing nowadays, but what a game. What an absolutely incredible comeback all began with this idea, long castles out into the open, creating counterplay down the d-file that was relatively hard to face, and Magnus missed this knight g5, rook h5, he should have played bishop back to f8, momentum was fully on his side, but he just slightly overestimated his position, and being a good sport that he is, he allowed it to play out 
he didn't resign. You gotta let the en passant mate happen. When this happened, when ETXF6 happened, it was recorded that Eric Rosen squealed so loud, okay, that one of his neighbors fainted. Just Eric was just sitting in a chair and squealed so loud that the sonic level made his neighbors faint. It's crazy. Absolutely nuts. Just take another look at it. It's, it's incredible. Even when he loses, Magnus does incredible things. And he uh, makes awe-inspiring content for all of us. Mostly me. You just watch. Whew. Okay, that was, that was really fun. Um, it's actually funny. It's like 6.40 where I am right now. Uh, 18.40 in case you guys use 24 hours uh, time. And I have to be somewhere at seven o'clock. I have to be somewhere in 20 minutes. And I di and didn't think I would have enough time to record this video, but then I realized this doesn't need a 30 minute video. This is a quick one. You turn this on, you eat your sandwich, you eat your breakfast. You watch me at the corporate toilet, right? Who doesn't take, you know, who doesn't sit for like 40 minutes on the toilet, seriously? Like the whole process takes like 40 seconds or rest of the time we just sit there playing bullet and getting mad. Anyway, thank you for watching. En passant checkmate, oh my God. And I'll see you in the next video. Get out of here.